Howdy folks. So one of my places that I used to work was throwing out some old networking gear and uh, I managed to score a couple of these things. These are uh, power over ethernet or PoE injectors. Uh, so basically you take um, T-Base 100 uh, ethernet and it injects um, about 45 to 55 volts AC into the unused uh, lanes of the Cat5 or Cat6 cable and sends that out and then of course you can have remote devices like wireless access points that was what this was used with uh, and other things like cameras and stuff that use it you know small amounts of power about 10-15 watts um, it's a cool standard it's uh, 802.3 AF um, is the official standard uh, so I looked this, this up this is by Intermech uh, this unit dates to around 2003-ish, um, so it's it's quite old by today's standards, although uh, it's perfectly fine. Um, you may be able to see in the camera, it's, it's yellowed in uh, in certain areas. This is, uh, it's been on for probably 12 years solid. So I thought I'd just take a look inside, uh, see how it's, how it's made, and, you know, this is probably cost some ridiculous amount of money um, back when they were new. So you see it's got two wall mounts, but it's got feet so you can stick it down. We just have units, you got universal power input, so um, 100 to 240 volts. And of course we've got the data in, power data out. We have a main light, which is a red and green LED, which tells you uh, basically whether the power is on um, whether like the, whether the device is on or uh, it turns red if the power goes out of tolerance so if the voltage drops below 45 or goes above 57 it cuts off and this goes red and that just comes on when you have some some load on this so you can tell this was just taken out of service and uh, haven't yet even taken off the label maker stuff yet so these come off really easy they're kinda kinda crusty yeah, like I said, I scored a bunch of these, so I'm going to see if I can build a little power supply, a little DC to, or a, not AC to DC, but a, a little power supply that can maybe, maybe use these to power some remote devices. I don't actually own anything that's PoE, but uh, there's a few things I'd like to make PoE. So, this might be a good idea. Okay, so that comes off. Okay, that was easy. So, uh, do we have a date? I was like looking at the dates on some of these things. Um, yeah, so there we go. S uh, December 2003. So, uh, yeah, I was right with the 2003. Yeah, if, you've, if, if you're ever wondering, the um, easiest way to find was when something was made is to check when the plastic moldings were made. A lot of them will have these sort of dial things and there's usually a bunch of them and they spell out the you know the month and the year sometimes even the day. In this case um, the dial on the outside points to the month see 1 through 12 and then the 03 in the center is the the year so I mean that's when the plastic was made but generally they don't make these in advance. Generally these are made um, you know roughly around the time the actual unit was assembled not always but generally so this is what we've got inside um, and this actually it looks to be quite well made actually silk screen power power D sign interesting I'm not sure uh, never seen that before power over LAN hub okay does this come out of, uh, yes it does Okay, so other than, other than the clear discoloration where things have definitely gotten hot and toasty in here, um, got some interesting stuff in here. So let's uh, let's take a look here. So we've got a uh, double-sided load. There's uh, surface mount stuff on the back. Obviously, all the big stuff on the. On the top there, you can see it is wave soldered. They've got the wave arrow. Kind of interesting how they've done the uh, 
the pads, the thieving pads on these uh, these two big ICs here, or yeah, actually, there's there's they put a large pad that's unconnected to the uh, to the left of these, so that as the wave goes through, uh, rather than clumping together on the two pins of the device shorting them out, it clumps to this unused pad. Um, on other boards I've seen, they'll put just one big pad for the corners, but in this case they've split it, which is kind of unusual, but I mean, it works. Uh, you can see that it's caught here, here, and here, but not here, here, and here. So, coming in, we've got our IEC mains. Um, the ground is uh, not connected to anything, it's just a floating tab, which uh, is kind of disappointing. Uh, I mean, it's it's tied into the board, but doesn't go anywhere. So that's a little disappointing. I mean, not that something like this would really need to be grounded. I mean, it's all floating anyway. The output's floating, but I don't know. At least they managed to get away with a you know a standard connector because obviously finding you know specialty cables and stuff is super annoying. So we've got a bridge rectifier. We've got what looks like a common mode choke, some EMI suppression. Um, some few, okay, so we've got, uh, that looks like a, a MOV. We have our big storage capacitor here, and that looks to be like the uh, Nippon Chemicon logo. So not a crappy capacitor. Rated for 105 degrees C. It is 400 volt, 68 microfarad. Not too bad. We have a power device here. Uh, these the which is on a nice little heatsink. Can I get that off? So we can find out what that is. Oh, it's clipped on there quite nicely. I like that. It's a lot better than trying to drill a hole through the, or uh, put a screw through that. Uh, they have, uh, there is a sill pad on it, although the board, or the heatsink is uh, isolated. And that is a TOP4, no, TOP234Y. Uh, it's a four term, a five terminal device. So that would appear to be some sort of uh, integrated uh, switching device for switch mode power supply here, although um, I will probably look it up and I'll stick the thing as to what it actually is in the corner. So we've got our opto for our isolation. Transformer looks, uh, looks quite nice. Um, does have some sort of brown uh, lacquer on it. I'm not sure if it's always that color or if it's gotten that way from heat over the years. I'm not quite sure. We've got our uh, suppression caps. Uh, it looks like our DC filter here, which is a Sanyo 220 microfarad at 63 volts. And it's also 105 degrees C rated. That's good. Uh, it looks like all the caps were actually 105 degrees C rated. And they seem to have used a mixture of Nippon for these and Sanyo for these. We have another uh, ST part up here. So they've obviously not needed uh, as, as much heat sinking. That's what this massive pad on the back was. Um, it was just the thermal, thermal pad. So you can see all the VS stitching that they've used to try and get the heat out and just spread it over such a large area, which they've obviously solder filled, um, filled up those vias as well, try and give it a bit more, maybe thermal capacitance. So this is a W3P443. Um, I believe so, yeah. We've got a connector here, JP1. Um, that's a little interesting. Why there'd be a connector that's got that many pins on a device like this that's of course not connected to anything, I think that's kind of interesting. 
I like the way they mounted the LEDs. That's that's quite nice. They've got them in their little plastic holders. And they've uh, they've 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 labeled the silk screen quite nicely. You've got all of the all the connectors. Uh, I, I I like I like the layout of the board. It's quite nice. So the back they've they've got this logo like you know, only two places, but I'm not sure what that is. So obviously this connector is probably some sort of programming for this chip here because it's got the obligatory firmware version type sticker on it. And what kind of part is that? Oh, that looks hard to read. That does not look like it's going to be easy. So I can't quite tell what that is right now. Um, I think I can make out a Freescale logo. I'll, I'll pop in what it is if I can ever make it out with a microscope. I think there's a Freescale logo on there. So it's some sort of a microcontroller, microprocessor of some kind. Uh, obviously it's got software on it. And that must be doing, you know, I'm not quite sure what that would be doing. Something like this, it's quite a, it's quite a simple device. I don't know the ins and outs, I don't, and I don't think that there's any, they don't think this is involved with data communication in any way, um, because as far as I know, 802.3AF doesn't have communication, it's just a power spec. But again, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a network engineer, so I can't say. Um, we have another device here, LM324. And another tiny, tiny part. And 78L05. So, I mean, overall, um, it's actually not a bad unit. They've got good creepage distance. Uh, between the uh, primary and the secondary. They've got nice, uh, nice big thick traces for all the power stuff. They bolted the mains connector down. When you jam it in there, it doesn't crack off the solder tabs. So overall, quite a nice, uh, quite a nice board. And I mean, it's it's yellowed and discolored over the years, but it still works uh, 12, 12 years later, so um, not bad. I mean, I don't know if you can still get these. You probably can't. So the uh, the top just, so the front just sort of sits in there. That's a nice way of making a case. So it just kind of sits in like that. Let's see how easy is it to get this uh, spring back on there. It's actually quite nice. I like that. Very easy and fast to get that on and off. I actually think I have a couple heat sinks like that that I bought a long time ago for a project that never happened. Fits together quite nice. I mean, you could even service that. And uh, let's see, let's see what happens when you plug it in. Okay, so that's interesting. So the lights both came on at once, and then this one came on. So obviously, obviously that took a while. So um, I'd say that that processor, which I'm calling a freescale device, uh, obviously has to start up, and probably it probably does some sort of system check to verify this isn't going to blow up whatever the hell you plug in. Uh, so yeah, I wish I had something to plug into this. Hopefully soon I'll make one. I looked on eBay for just like just the modules that you can use to just down convert the the, uh, the AC from this into like 12 volts or 5 volts or something. A uh, 5 volts would be more optimal because most of the stuff I do is TTL um, plus USB is 5 volts, right? Uh, but uh, I couldn't honestly find anything. Uh, I mean, th there was very, very few modules, and all the ones I could find were either ridiculously expensive or absolutely massive. Um, they wouldn't have fit into any of the projects. So, 
I'll let you know if I find anything.